Hey, Ronnie and uh, Jorgen, it's good to have you back again. Thanks for coming in. And uh, this will be basically the last session for this day. Uh, and what a topic to end with, like a deep dive session for troubleshooting MEM managed Windows 10 and Windows 11 endpoints. Uh, it's great to have you guys here and Ronnie, I have sent you up uh, in the live event, so the stage is yours. Cool. I guess we'll just uh, kick it off then. Uh, well, first of all, thank you and uh, welcome again. Uh, this is our second session today, here and I. Um, I guess this is the last session of the day and uh, maybe also the the last uh, session of the conference, so I hope you had a, a really good time. Um, we uh, we definitely enjoyed being uh, being part of it so far. So uh, my name is uh, Ronnie Peterson. I am a cloud architect working at Epento in, in Denmark. I'm a Microsoft MVP for a certain amount of uh, years, uh, close to 15. And uh, I work with uh, endpoint management and uh, everything around Intune, Windows 11, Configuration Manager and stuff like that for the last, I don't know, 25 years. That's why I'm getting gray on the top, trying to, to figure out how to, to troubleshoot all this stuff. And uh, with me today, I have my good friend from Sweden, Jürgen. Yes, thank you, Ronnie. Yeah, really looking forward to this last session as well. Um, we uh, troubleshooting the managed, the managed Windows 10, 11 is a great topic and great fun as well. And there's so many things to cover as well. Um, and I'm living next to Denmark, but not really in Denmark. So I'm from Sweden. Um, also an enterprise mobility MVP. Um, been doing this for many, many years now, and it's still so much fun. Uh, it's like having uh, your best, your favorite hobby as your work as well. It's great. If there's any questions afterwards, feel free to reach out to either me or Ronnie. Uh, uh, that's no problem and we will help you, gladly help you with uh, all the questions you have. Um, so let's kick it off then. Uh, what are we going to cover to this last hour? Uh, what tools, some tools that can be used? Log files, configuration pro policy processing, subscription based activation, which is starting to be a problem or an a challenge at least. Uh, some enrollment troubleshooting, troubleshooting policies, and then last we'll kick up, kick out with the management extension and see how we can troubleshoot that little um, little add-on. And with that, I think we'll start, right? Uh, one of the tools that we need to do our job is unfortunately the most boring one. And that's the like the last resort when we troubleshoot something and that's remote control so we can help the end user directly. Um, I couldn't find a better picture of a remote control, but it would be cool to remote control a user that way instead of just the PC, but we'll see someday. Uh, as everyone knows, TeamViewer integrates in the endpoint management portal, so we can just say in tune yes, remote control with uh, uh, team viewer. We have quick assist, which is built in and quick assist is my nemesis, I would say, uh, as it lacks support for UAC. If you have UAC configured to open on the secure desktop, which you should have, there's no logging that uh, remote control ever, ever took place. Uh, so maybe it's OK for small organizations. Uh, otherwise, I actually think it should be uninstalled from all corporate machines, so we don't open that way to be remote controlled from anywhere on the Internet. Even if you're on the inside, it will run through every everything as it's uh, the traffic is proxied through uh, HTTPS and Microsoft.com addresses. What is cool with Quick Assist is that we can actually use it during autopilot. So if I autopilot the machine, and that's a different topic as well, which you shouldn't cover today as well. I can just uh, press the shift F10 and open my command prompt and then I can uh, request assistance from my autopilot process basically. 
So as long as I have network, which I should have if I've come to this dialogue, I can actually get help with quick assist uh, as early as this process. Uh, and yes, uh, F shift F10 to open a command prompt during uh, autopilot. It's definitely a security risk, uh, but it cannot. It can only be disabled if you put your own image on the machine because you need a file. Uh, a tag file which turns it off basically. So now I can remote control my machine through the or the end users machine throughout the autopilot process, helping them uh, with whatever question they had, if it's typing their password multi-factor or whatever challenge they're facing. Uh, so it's actually from that perspective, quick assist is quite good, but it should still be uninstalled afterwards <laughs> as it's still a security issue, I think. Um, at at uh, Ignite a couple of weeks ago, uh, remote help was announced, which will be built into the Intune portal, uh, and it will support RBAC and view only permissions, uh, full control. We will have nice pictures from Azure AD who is remote controlling you, uh, and who you are remote controlling as well. So it's, it looks really, really nice. And it has logging and everything that we need from a compliance perspective as well. But note that this feature in Intune or MEM will come with an additional cost. What that cost is has not been uh, publicly uh, announced yet. Uh, so we still don't know what this feature will cost. Otherwise, we're back to using something else. Uh, so let's look look out for that. It will be in preview first, and then it will be available everywhere. But as soon as it's GA, then it will be a cost for it. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, CM Trace for everyone that's used Configuration Manager before. CM Trace is our best friend. Uh, it's still a great log reader, uh, but it's not free as many think. It the, it's actually licensed together with uh, configuration manager, but as configuration manager includes, oh, uh, Intune license includes the use rights for configuration manager as well. If you have those scenarios, you can still deploy it to all your modern managed client as well. Uh, I wrote a little PowerShell script just to put it in there uh, so we can use it, and it's it's still the best thing to do, I think, uh, because we need a good log reader as well. Uh, we also, and, and Ronnie will show you some more about log files and where to look soon as well. But before that, some, sometimes we want to do really cool or really advanced troubleshooting. And we can do that with Wireshark, uh, Fiddler, Netmon, whatever. But there's a community tool created by Oliver Kieselbach, who is called Sync ML Viewer, which is actually great because we can see the 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 sync lm protocol stream coming down on the machine with the actual policies as well which is really cool if we try to troubleshoot why something isn't working or why a policy isn't applied or anything else uh, so let's see if we can switch to my demo machine which was the last open window i had of course so this is basically how it looks uh, i can uh, uh, read the stream, I can see messages, I will show that soon, and I can see some response code references if I don't know what the response codes means. I can also save the file so I can troubleshoot it later if I like. Um, but if we look at my scenario here, I put this machine in a, in a uh, Azure AD group with a policy targeted for autopilot, which should convert all the devices to autopilot devices. And when I then search for hardware in my sync ML file, I can actually see here that my the data for the device hardware data is actually my autopilot reference ID or autopilot hardware ID coming back up to Intune. Uh, so it's actually really cool. Uh, and if we look here, we can see all the traffic I had. And we can see here that I have, a, uh, for instance, we can see different applications. So we can see that I think the web application, that one is a good one because it's in clear text, right? Uh, so here we can see the web application. 
uh, which MDM uh, uh, UI it is that's been used and what the payload is and what the data is. So it's actually quite cool. So we can actually see what's coming down on the device. Uh, so if you haven't checked it out, I really, really encourage you to. And we can also sync the, with the MDM down here as we, if we like to initiate the new sync. And then it will, you will see that it will, if I go down somewhere, it will actually do it now and sync again. So um, uh, it's actually really cool. Uh, to be able to troubleshoot it that way. And it's much, much easier to use that and, than the other tools available as well. Uh, so if you ever have that need, check it out. I really, I really enjoy it. And that was the pictures is anything wouldn't work. So Ronnie, with log files and where do I troubleshoot? Uh, the other things you can troubleshoot. Oh, and, and this is so much fun. Let me just see if I can share my screen. Uh, do you see my screen? Absolutely. Awesome. In that case, let's move on. So, you know, um, as a configuration manager admin uh, for many years, I have always been a real uh, fan and been really happy with the uh, with uh, with all the log files, especially if it's if it's a good one, <laughs> if it's well written. So, when we are moving to to the mod management world and you to MDM managed devices. Some of these things has uh, changed a lot. And uh, also when, when, when people are working remote, uh, uh, this is something that we need to understand in order to, uh, to help our end users and to troubleshoot stuff. And some of these features is, uh, is built in in, uh, in Intune. So uh, let's get into to Intune and, and see how, uh, how this functionality is working. So, this is my uh, my Intune uh, lab where I have a few devices and uh, some of these things takes a little bit of time. So I have actually run some of the actions uh, up front, but I'll show you how it works. So we can go into our devices and we can go into our Windows devices and uh, then I can see the devices that I have here. If I take a random uh, co-managed device, let's just take uh, this one. Then you can see that in the top action field up here, I have a button called collect diagnostic data. And basically what that means is that I will download uh, the log files from the machine or ask the machine to actually collect them locally, and then it will upload that to, uh, to Intune. This works on all supported versions of Windows 10 and 11. It works both with Intune and it works with uh, Comance devices, but it only works if the device is marked as corporate. So if it's a personal device, it doesn't really matter if it's enrolled into Intune, we will not be able to, uh, to collect these informations. So if I click this one and click yes, then down here under my uh, diagnostics, you will be able to see that uh, uh, nothing has been requested, but very soon there will be updated here so you can see that it's trying to collect these files. If I go to my, uh, my front page here, you will also get to see that uh, message here in, in just a while when the client has been contacted. So let's go back to one of my other devices where I've already done this uh, uh, upfront. And uh, if I click on, on this machine, you can see here that uh, that it has already been run. I have the collect diagnostics that has been completed right here. And if I go down to my, um, if I go down to my, where is it? Device diagnostic here. You can see that it was completed. You can see that it started 354 uh, 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 and it was completed uh, close to five minutes later. So this is the time that it will take to to gather this information and, and upload it. Of course, if the device is, is shut down or is unable to connect it, it might fail or it might uh, take a little longer. So all I have to do is to click on the download and uh, then this file will be downloaded to my uh, download folder. And let me just see when it opens here, I can go to my download folder and I can extract this, uh, this file. So let's see what happens if we extract the file just right here in the same folder. And 
it should be done soon. Here we go. Then you can see we have a lot of log files and we have a lot of folders. These files and folders are fully documented. If you go to the, let me just open a website here. Microsoft has documented all the files, registry keys uh, and folders, log files, event viewers, everything that will be collected. One thing to notice here is that since this both work with Intune and uh, with co-managed devices, you will see that, uh, that both uh, Intune, but also our configuration manager log files are collected. So if we scroll down here, you can see that number 47 is our config manager log files. We even get the setup log files, etc. All the files in this folders that are named something with log will be collected. One thing that you should always know is that uh, that subfolders are not collected. So if you have a custom application and you are adding log files to these folders in the subfolders, these log files will not be collected. It's only the files that is directly uh, located inside that folder. This means that if you're running, um, let me just uh, let me just switch back to my where did it go my log files here we go so if we go to 47 you can see that these are config manager log files and if you work with config manager this should hopefully look very familiar to you but also uh, if you go to this folder here you can see no not this one the uh, intune management extension here you can see the intune management extension log file but you also get a lot of other uh, reports. Um, one example of that could be uh, number 42, which let me see why this is not sorted by name, which is a lot easier, 42, here we go. This is a report on the, on the VLAN. So if you're troubleshooting something that is network related, this report is being run and executed locally on the client. You can see the system information. You can see all the network adapters, uh, the MAC addresses. You can see script output in a very nice UI where you can see IP config and, you know, etc. from all kind of uh, commands that has been uh, executed on the client and that you can use for uh, for troubleshooting your, your issue. One of the things that I'm a huge fan of is, uh, let me see if I can get back to my Explorer here. I have an application here in the root of my C drive. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it is, but I'm using the Microsoft, uh, no, not the Microsoft, the PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit to, to wrap my uh, applications. So if I go in here and I find my uh, XML file for the application, you can see that I'm actually storing open with, and we have it here. You can see that I'm actually redirecting my log files to the Windows folder config manager log files, and then I have this extra folder here called software. And basically what that means is that these log, these log files will not be collected on my device. I have to remove this part in order to, uh, to do this uh, third party troubleshooting. If you are running, in uh, in a Intune managed only device and you don't have config manager and you have custom log files, then I recommend that you store these in Intune management extension path under log files because everything that you put in here will also be uh, be collected. So let's get back to the slide. So now we know how to get the log files. We know how to work with them and we also know um, what they can do for us. Here's just a screenshot of uh, what you should do if you want to collect these files. So the next step is uh, uh, often, you know, now we have something that has we have deployed and it's not working the way uh, we expect. So in this case, uh, I will try to take a, a policy, deploy it to a client, and then we'll do the reverse engineering and see how it's actually being applied to the machine. So in this case, I will do a Microsoft uh, uh, Office 365 policy. Basically, it's just a policy that will enable automatic updates, and we will also configure the update channel for this uh, for this application. So uh, let's uh, let's look into our uh, demo environment again and jump back. 
So the first thing we have done is that uh, I've created a Windows policy for my uh, devices. In this case, it's simply just a Microsoft app update setting policy, and you can see that I've used the session catalog. So <coughs> if I go into the to this uh, policy and scroll all the way down, you can see that I have configured these few settings. I have enabled automatic updates and I've configured the update channel to run the current channel preview. So basically, this is all that uh, that we have done and I have deployed this uh, to uh, to all my devices. So what what happens next is that these policies will now be uh, will now be uh, picked up by the by the device and uh, the device will then write this policy down to the registry. And uh, in order to uh, to find these policies, let's open our break edit. Here we go and let's navigate to my provider ID. So the first thing that I need to make sure is that I know my provider ID and the provider ID is located right here under my policy manager ADMX that is installed and then you can see the uh, policy provider right here. So this policy provider for my device and then I can go down under providers and find this provider ID which is my device and then I can find the policies in here that has been applied to my machine. And as you can see, we have something here that looks a little bit familiar. We have some Office 16 V2 policy updates that has been applied to this machine. So basically the policy has worked. So if we look down to uh, to this folder here, you can see that the first setting that we configured was that we enabled automatic updates and you can see here that it was enabled. We can also see that the ring we have selected, the first release channel or the current uh, current channel uh, preview has been has been configured. So basically now Intune has done its job. Next, we need to understand the application because the application is actually reading these settings in order to uh, to, uh, to to set the policy inside of the application. And uh, to verify this, then we need to go to the office registry settings of the uh, uh, of the device. So in this case, I will navigate to software Microsoft Office click to run configuration. And in here I will see that the update channel has been configured to this CDN. The CDN is basically a URL uh, where the, the files for this specific release of Office that I prefer is configured. This release uh, starting with uh, 6.4, uh, 2.5.6, etc. This actually means uh, um, uh, current channel preview. You can go to the Office documentation and see uh, what the IDs of the different update channels is, but in this case I know that this is uh, this is what I want. Okay. So now we know that this has been picked up. <coughs> so how do I test my policy and how do I make sure that it's actually working? Well, in this case, I need to uh, I need to scroll down a little bit and find my uh, my office. Uh, let me just go like this. And I am I have way too much open right now. Let me just do this. Mm, updates. Why is this not? Here we go, and here is the updates. So it's Office, it's click to run, and it's updates. And in here, you can see that I have a policy registry session last update detection results uh, update, uh, and 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 this is basically a time policy. This states this value here actually states when the update policy run the last when the last time. So it's just to to make sure that the policies are not uh, updating all the time. So in order to test this policy, I I need to clear this value and set it to zero. Basically, this means that we have never run, and then we need to to launch the automatic updater that is uh, being built with Office and that is inside of the task uh, scheduler. So let me just see if I can find this on my device. 
here we go. And here we have my task scheduler. So I go to Microsoft, I go to Office, and in here you can see that the hours Office automatic update is, uh, is, uh, is right here. And if I right click this one and click run, then it will run because I don't have a previous value. Otherwise, it will only run um, uh, uh, once every day. So um, all I have to do left is to launch uh, my Office application. And in this case, I'm running Microsoft Excel. And as you can see, it has been updated to the current channel preview. Updates has been automatically enabled and will be downloaded and installed. And you can also see that I'm running the latest November build of Excel. So basically, this is how you need to, to learn how to troubleshoot the policies and understand where the uh, where, when you create a policy, uh, what's actually happening on the device. That will make it so much easier to, uh, to troubleshoot. OK, uh, let me just see my slide. I'm not really sure if it's I need to hand this over to Jürgen or not by now. Let me just. I have everything that I just showed here in my uh, PowerPoint slide. So uh, when you get to download these, you can uh, you should get all the values and, and everything that you've seen. So next, Jürgen will tell us about subscription based activation troubleshooting. Absolutely, I will, Ronnie. There's a question for you in the chat as well, so you have something to do while I present. So. Let me see if I can answer that. Um, so uh, why did we have troubleshooting subscription-based activation? Well, we started seeing some issues with the subscription-based activations in many different scenarios. So that's why it's um, time to start looking at it. Uh, subscription-based activation when you when you use an Azure AD Join device and you have your subscription in uh, in uh, Intel or in Azure AD, sorry, you have your license uh, acquired there. Um, it will actually reactivate the license every 30 days uh, once it's activated for the first time. And there's actually two two tasks, uh, two scheduled tasks that are triggering the license. Um, uh, acquisition and uh, enablement. Uh, so we can see those two tasks in the scheduled task. One is called enable license acquisition and one is, one is called license acquisition. And if you see, I have an error here on my machine as well. Uh, so it's actually the store that actually does the renewal itself and or actually the activation is a better word than saying than renewal. Uh, so in this case, I had more than one Azure AD account under my Access Worker School, which was added by the dreaded, um, do you want to register your device uh, when you uh, add a mailbox, for example. Uh, so absolutely. Uh, so this, if you look at this message I have here, it says uh, service error, uh, code 400, uh, single tenant ID expected for Azure AD users. Uh, and all the AD, Azure AD users provided in the request are expected to be associated with a single tenant. And apparently I had three uh, tenants on my machine at that time. And then my license will not renew and then I will end up with this. If I look in Windows uh, 10 in this case, but it's the same problem in Windows 11. Uh, it will revert back to the to the license in the firmware on the machine. Uh, so that would be. Um, um, that would be how it's that's why it still says it's activated with the digital license, but that's the Windows 10 Pro license. So how do we stop this? Well, the problem is this dialogue that's basically included in all Microsoft products, uh, remote desktop being the last one of them. Where you connect to Azure, Azure Virtual Machine, Azure um, Virtual Desktop, or Windows 365, it will also prompt you to stay signed in to all your apps. And the default is allow my organization to manage my, my device, which is even worse. And I don't want to do that. So the correct way is selecting no, sign in to this app only. 
Uh, there's a recommendation at docs to block this on all hybrid joint devices, but I say it should be blocked on all devices because if I have a personal enrolled Windows 10, I've had this issue as a customer as well. Um, as soon as I add a second account or second mailbox, for example, in a different tenant, Intune cannot sync and cannot do any management of the device anymore because it doesn't know which token to use. And for Azure AD joint devices, as we saw before, act Windows activation will fail after 30 days. Uh, so we turn off this with a settings uh, catalog setting called allow workplace. Then that dreaded dialog is not shown anymore for the user and the user cannot uh, register device in, a, in an additional tenant. Um, and going back to Pro, of course, means that we turn off security features and stuff like that. So definitely uh, something you should look into. Uh, enrollment then. Uh, well, troubleshooting and enrollment consists of many, many different ways. The first thing is, uh, do we actually have a license? Is the user allowed to enroll a device? I think uh, there was a session before with Kenneth that um, uh, showed uh, where he showed the enrollment policies and enrollment restrictions and everything. Um, so that's also something we need to check. We've seen a lot of network issues lately, especially in the work from home pandemic where um, uh, my son configured the Wi-Fi network. I don't know what he did. And then some Microsoft URLs were blocked by uh, some ad uh, blocking app or something. So extremely uh, interesting scenarios to troubleshoot during the pandemic. Um, that's for sure. Um, some error messages in my perspective could be much more nicer because uh, this one says that the user is not allowed to enroll, but then again, it actually says that my device cap is reached. So it could maybe say something else that you have too many devices, remove another one, for example. Uh, enrollment failures. We have a, a, a not a report, but under monitor in the mem portal, we can actually see uh, uh, if a device is blocked by a restriction. For example, we can actually see it there when it says device cannot be enrolled as personal device. So it will actually block it there and log it there as well. So we can actually see it uh, if we if we need to look into that. Um, but otherwise, I would say it's a lot of network issues we see as well. But this could also be an issue, absolutely. Um, if we do co-management, we now have some nice reports in Configuration Manager, which actually will tell us why a device isn't enrolled, um, uh, why uh, something went wrong. I like the un undefined error as well, uh, but normally they go away after a while, actually. So they at least are defined, but um, getting them in a co-management status is, is a good thing as well. And troubleshooting them is not that. This is a good help at least to get an overview. That was one of the biggest issues either. We didn't know the status of them. Uh, one thing to come take into account as well, if we do you do co-managed device enrollment, is that a co-managed device will always try to enroll using a device token and not the user token. If it fails with the device token for some reason, it will try to use, it will revert back to the user token. But depend, depending on conditional access settings or MFA settings, this can fail because there's an additional security uh, question we can't answer. And that's something to take into account if you do co-manage devices, is that the enrollment restriction called all users is actually applied to all devices. So if you block that one and block uh, corporate enrollment in that one, you will block it for all device tokens as, and not only for users. And then all your co-manage devices will use the user token instead to enroll. Uh, so that's uh, something very important to keep into mind. You will see it in the log file for co-management. It will on the client. It will say using device token. Something went wrong. Defaulting to user token instead. 
so it's very it's at least quite quite easy to look into the co-management uh, handler.log file on the client where we can see those parts. So how do we troubleshoot policies then, Ronnie? Oh, let me see if I can get my screen connected. Can you see my screen? Absolutely. Great. Uh, let me just see if I can get everything and click. Hey. Well, first of all, um, before we start, you know, troubleshooting the policies, it's also a good idea to understand how we handle conflicts and what policies should be used at at, at what uh, at what stage. There's a way. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can configure settings and uh, this is our recommendations uh, to do this you can do this in a lot of ways and of course uh, i'm not saying that you should go out and convert everything to to this if you have something that's that is working then perfect then leave it at that until you need to to update it but basically what we recommend is that if you have something that is security related and it is available under the, the endpoint security node, then you should definitely use that. The session catalog is a more modern view of the administrative template, so I would highly recommend that you use that also for the better and richer uh, reporting uh, that is that is coming with that uh, with that features. If you don't have that uh, uh, setting available that you want, then of course you can use the configuration uh, standard policies. You can use the administrative templates if that's what you like. If it's something that has not been published to the UI, then you can use the OMA UI or custom CSP settings. You still have the options to integrate third party uh, ADMX files if you want to manage Google Chrome or whatever third party apps. And of course, you could use PowerShell scripts. We have also seen that uh, some customers and, and some partners are starting to use more and more proactive mediation uh, when they are fixing stuff and setting stuff. And I think it's a really cool idea and you can do uh, a lot uh, with that. But you also need to take into consideration that this is not part of the Microsoft uh, Intune license. It actually does require a Windows Enterprise E3 license. So uh, and, and, and for now, uh, it's not even available if you have a Microsoft 365 Business Premium license. So it's something that's only available if you are licensed to use the enterprise version of, uh, of Windows. So with that in place, uh, then you also need to take into consideration that if you are removing a policy again, then the policy might not be uh, uh, removed from the client because uh, it's actually being tattooed to the registry. And if you have a, a, a user or a device that is member of a group and that group is assigned to a certain policy and you remove that uh, group or device again, then not all policies are removed. There's really no really good way uh, to, to, to know that upfront besides from, from testing it. So if it's important to you that when you remove a policy from a device, then it's go back to the to the uh, to the previous settings or the original settings, then to be absolutely sure you need to do some kind of validation either with a script or a, uh, a new policy that will will set the setting to to what you want it to, because otherwise you can end up in a situation where where things are becoming you know, kind of uh, in an unpredictable state. If you have policies that are applied to a user group uh, and that group has been, uh, or the user has been removed from that group, then you also need to, to know that the platform specific policy refresh cycle um, is, is not the same uh, uh, for just the policy refresh. It will take seven hours plus the time the refresh uh, policy takes. And basically this is to avoid that uh, some admins might do uh, a kind of you know mistake uh, where they accidentally remove a lot of users from a group and then the policy disappears and you know uh, stuff starts to, uh, stops to uh, to work. So with this uh, with this design that was announced uh, this summer, 
Uh, it's not something that is making Intune slow, it's actually by design. Uh, is uh, different for, for, for each device. So Android, iOS, Windows, it's not necessarily the same. For Windows enrolled devices, it is every eight hours that the policy refresh, but you can see that when the, when the device is uh, recently enrolled, for the first 15 minutes, it will be every three minutes, then it will be 15 minutes for the next two hours, and then moving forward, it will be uh, every eight hours. Of course, there's a lot of ways that you can manually trigger these uh, policies, and we will also look into that in just a second. Let me just show uh, how this works. If we go to the task scheduler that we used before, you can see here that if I go to Microsoft, if I go to Windows, if I go to the enterprise management, no, not this one. Uh, uh, it's the, hang on, it is, oh, of course, here we go. I need to select the provide ID. Here you can see that, uh, that these schedules, when the device is enrolled, is automatically created. And here you can see that it will trigger every three minutes for the first 15 minutes, then 15 minutes for two hours, and then repeatedly until infinity. And here you can also see at what time my device was actually deployed. So that was uh, last year in, in June. And uh, if I want to, to trigger my, my policy, I can also simply rerun this, uh, this, um, this task in, in my scheduler. Sometimes um, you, you need to, uh, to, to run the policy manually, and you can do that in, in, in different ways. One of the ways is that you can go into your settings uh, inside your control panel or, or settings in, in Windows 10 or 11, and then you can simply click sync now if the device is enrolled and then it will, uh, will kick off. If you have a lot of devices or something that you have recently rolled out or a security policy that you really, really, really want to hit the, uh, hit the, the, the devices right now, then you might be in an, in an issue because there are some limitations uh, with the policies, because when you create a new policy, if you update a policy or delete a policy or something, we will send a trigger to the device and say, hey, please go and update your policy right now. But this is limited. Uh, depending on the platform. Uh, if, if you are doing an update uh, that hits an, an Android policy, then Microsoft is sending that notification to Android. And if it's uh, iOS, they will send it to Apple using the push notification service. And then it's up to Apple to send out these uh, notifications to the device. And if it's Microsoft, then it's Microsoft. But we are limited to that. And uh, because denial of service and, and a lot of other things, you will only get an amount, and I don't know exactly what that amount is right now, uh, of, of clients that will get the policy refresh. The rest of them will, will wait for the eight hour, uh, eight hour refresh. So if you have something where you really, really, really need to push it, then we can use something uh, to trigger the client automatically. If we go into the, to the portal and find a random device, uh, not this device, uh, oh, I click monitor again all devices and I take a, let's take this one. Then you can see I have a policy sync here. That is one uh, command being sent. So this is not limited to anything. This device will sync immediately. If I want my devices to sync right away, then I can use a PowerShell script like this to actually connect to each and sync in uh, each and uh, every device and trigger the sync uh, option. So I can go in here first, I need to connect to my graph. I will connect in using my uh, corporate account. And you can see that I'm not connected and my tenant ID. And then I can get 
all my devices from Intune, and here you can see that I both have uh, iPads and iPhones and whatever. If I only want my Windows devices, I can select that, and then I can, oops, let me just see if I got that, and I can count them. We have a pretty small environment here, so we have 28 devices in, in our lab, and uh, then I can, for every device that has now been selected, and, and these are the Windows devices, then I can execute this, and then it will say, for every managed device, please send a, a, a sync to that device, and then it will basically take them all. If you have like 10,000 or 18 or 20,000 devices, this will probably take more than eight hours to run anyway. So this is not a solution if you are a really, really, really big company. But if you have something and if you're testing or if you're a consultant that is just being hired for the day and you really need to make sure that everything is working as expected before you leave, then this is a really, really nice uh, functionality that can help you get your job done um, faster. If we want to troubleshoot it locally, uh, then we can, of course, also go into our uh, settings uh, panel here again. And uh, inside this uh, this management, you can see we have this create report. If I click on create report, it will generate a local. Uh, let me just go to users. A local report. Uh, this didn't work. There we go. Go to my public, go to my public documents, and here you can see my diagnostic, and then I can open this report. This report is basically a report that says, you know, what device, uh, what settings has been applied to my device, uh, how is my device configured, certificates, everything, and if you scroll down a little bit, you can see that this is a list of all the managed policies that is being uh, sent and, and hit to this device. And then I can see I have some areas. I have the default value. I have the current value. I have the target if I'm targeting a user and device. And, and we can also do and see our policies and follow them down here. So let me just scroll down and see. I have a policy where I'm deploying a new Windows 11 start menu. Here it is. You can see that I have an area that is start. I have a name for my policy that is called configure start pins. I have a pinned list. I don't have a default value because this is not this is not setting. Basically, it's it's these icon that you see here that I've been pinning to my device. So this is my uh, this is my list. I can see that it hits the device. I can also see where it's coming from. And here you can see my provider ID and then you can see the setting. So this is kind of interesting. So if I go back to my uh, if I go back to my registry, let me see if I can find this and go to my provider ID and my policies. Then we can see down here that my provider ID is the C CFE. And if I go under providers, find my provider ID, scroll all the way down here, you can see I have something called start. And this is basically the area out here that is start. So I click on this and then you can see I have my configure start pins and here you can see the value. So basically everything that is being set by a policy written to our registry and then picked up by the client can be uh, uh, can be followed here. So if you don't see the setting that you expect in here, well, then maybe uh, something uh, went wrong uh, along the way. Uh, how much time do I have you? I have, uh, I don't have more time, so I will <laughs> leave it over to you. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, thank you, Ronnie, and I will show my screen as well. Uh, we have one more thing which is important to troubleshoot as well before we wrap up this uh, day as well, and that's basically the Intune Management Extension Agent because many of the things we do it is actually done through the management extension. So why is it done through a management extension? Well, basically it's because we don't have that feature or that possibilities built into the MDM stack in Windows. So basically it's an, an add-on for Intune to add um, 
support for Win32 apps, PowerShell scripts. If you use proactive remediation, so you looked at that in endpoint analytics, which, which I really encourage you all to check out because it's so cool. Um, it also uses the Windows, uh, the Intune management extension pre to, to uh, execute the commands, basically. Um, it's not the installed per default. It's installed the first time you deploy either a Win32 app, a PowerShell script, or a proactive remediation from Intune. Then it's installed automatically. It's updated automatically. So hopefully we will never end up with the problem where we need to troubleshoot the version of it. So far we've seen at least. Maybe that will happen. Uh, there was a before it was very interested because if you in, enroll the device as personal in Win in Intune, a Windows device, the Intune management extension were never installed, so you couldn't deploy Win32 apps. Uh, started about a year ago. It's actually now is installed, but it's not supported, uh, which I think is quite fun actually, as it's a cloud service. And if it's not supported, it should be blocked. Or is it for some features to be supported and not others, maybe? Uh, so who knows? But that's how it is. So keep that in mind that all features won't work if you have personal and role devices. Uh, what's a corporate enrolled device then? That's something that we need to take into account as well. It's basically, it's everything where we can control uh, the output uh, if we look at the modern options. We can have a device enrollment manager account, we can deploy it through autopilot, we can enroll it through a bulk provisioning package, and we can use it through a, a group policy as well. Uh, if I Azure AD join my machine manually, it will actually say that it's corporate in one view, but from a, a restriction perspective and functionality, it's still not um, a corporate device as you are always added as a local admin and there's no way to control that. Uh, the Intune management extension is installed automatically. It has its own uh, event log as well. So we can look in the event log under uh, device management enterprise diagnostics. We have some events generated by the endpoint desktop app management CSP, which actually calls the, the uh, management extension. But as it's an add-on, it's a it's a 32 bit add-on as well. Uh, so it's installed in program files x86 microsoft intune management extension and it's also there we actually see the content coming down which is quite interesting as it's in program files uh, but that's where we see detection scripts coming down we see applications coming down we see the staging of the application if it's throttled by by deliver optimization for example or branch cache or something else the interesting here is that if we look at configuration manager where we have the 24 hour rule so if you if you install an application it's stored in the in the cache for 24 hours after it's used before it's being purged and it's not purged until the this the cache is full if we look at the intune management extension it will purge it immediately when basically immediately when the installation is done so we won't have a cache to manage in that perspective we have a log file as well, uh, which is in the program data Microsoft Intune my, my extension log file. And it's and we also have the agent executor, and we can see client health as well, where it actually checks that it's okay as well. Uh, so if I do a quick look at it here in CM Trace, of course, it looks pretty much like we had in, in Configuration Manager, but uh, this is, for example, an application to install the universal print provisioning package from, uh, from Intune. So it's actually logs a lot of information for us. Um, so uh, it's uh, definitely uh, uh, a lot of things we can be found here, which is easier to find here than easier to find in the other um, in the event log instead. Uh, so if you look at the registry, we can see the information there as well. Under Intune Management Extension, we see policies. We have a, a, a 
green, which is the Azure AD object of the user. So it's different on each machine. You must keep that in mind. And we have the application policy grid coming down and we can actually see both the result and what was done basically. And every policy is hashed as well, so we only see the policy hash here as well. Uh, but we can still see some parts there as well, and that was for policies. And we have Win32 apps down here as well. So we can see some, so we can see the Win32 app down here as well if we like. So we can see this is a script. So we can see a lot of things in the registry as well if we want to look at, at it from that perspective. If we troubleshoot it, well, Normally, it's not that big deal. We've seen it stopped at some machines. Um, you can also verify it in the MDIAG report. That was the one he showed before. Uh, or are you meeting the prereqs for actually installing the applications, as we said before? Maybe it shouldn't work because you're on a personal enroll device. And that was basically our <laughs> time is up. And that was basically our. Uh, uh, or a little troubleshooting session as well. I'm not sure if there's any questions. I actually saw something interesting in the event log files as well, um, in the Intune Management Extension log file. I'm not sure if you use uh, uh, a managed installer, but this is quite interesting. The managed installer in Intune is apparently not supported on Windows 11. It's only supported on Windows 10. So that could be something to keep in mind as well if you, uh, if you use the managed installer and not want to step up to Windows 11. I haven't seen anything about it and I haven't run into it in real world yet, but it will, I'm sure it will come. So it's interesting. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, I think that was it for me and Ronnie. If there are, and I saw, see that there's no questions. Um, so thank you for taking the time to listening to us and, and back to our, uh, mo our moderator. Yeah, uh, so thank you. Thank you, Jorgen. Thank you, Ronnie, for having wonderful session. And uh, it's our pleasure to have you guys for the day. OK, thank you. Thank you so much for your, you know, all your inputs and insights. Well, thank, thank you, you for having you. us. Yeah, yeah, it's been great. It's always fun. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Also, I wanted to, you know, I just wanted to thank you all of the attendees. OK, whoever joined this meeting, I wanted to thank you everyone for being with us for the entire day okay and uh, we will look forward your support towards HTMD community so you know don't forget to you know like or follow HTMD community in Twitter or you can yeah you can follow us in LinkedIn thank you all <laughs>